So in the previous video, we talked about um, the two kind of data sources. One is a sample-based approach that samples the stacks, and the other is markers, which captures uh, deterministically, deterministically the things that happen in the browser. So now what I want to do is start to think about how to look at um, sample information. So in kind of the purest simple form, um, looking at uh, call stacks, um, here on the left side, uh, we've got this um, one millisecond, two millisecond, three millisecond, four, five, six. So these are six samples that were taken. Um, generally, you, you know, your profile would be much larger than this, but this is kind of a reduced case. So you can imagine if your application has a function A, it calls function B, it calls function C, and then finally it calls a function that says do work. And so over six milliseconds, this do work um, uh, function was observed by the profiler. So do work was the thing that was actually doing something, and A, B, and C um, weren't actually being called, but they were part of the call stack getting to this function called do work. Um, so if you imagine if you have a thousand, two thousand samples, that is really hard to analyze um, by just looking at the sample information. So we need a summary um, of what happens. And so that is the call tree. And um, there's some terms that go along with that. So let's look at our extremely simple sample example by going here to call tree sums the times together into a single tree. So if you notice now, instead of having all these six samples, we only have one tree that represents that. This is a very simple tree. This is just a single stack in the representation. So you see A calls B calls C calls do work. Um, and here the running time for every single one of these things is six milliseconds because whenever these were sampled, we have six samples and each sample were a millisecond long. So the entire running time for any of these um, functions is six milliseconds. But what's interesting to look at is the self time. So this is the time that was actually observed whenever the um, profiler collected the sample. So here the self time for A is zero milliseconds because it wasn't actually observed. The only function that was, was observed was do work. So you can see here A, B, and C are all zero for the self times and then do work will be six milliseconds because it was actually observed. Um, but keep in mind that you know if, if you actually observe B being called, B can have a self time. If there's a, if there's a sample collected, for instance, of A, B with nothing else. So this, the self time doesn't just mean the leafmost part of the call tree. It just means it was observed by the profiler when they collected a sample. So let's take another example, and this has more letters. Um, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit more for the video, so hopefully you can read it a little bit better. Um, and so now we have this only has three samples, so we have kind of a more reduced example to look at. If you notice here, A is the root function across everything, and then A calls B, but the next thing is where it gets interesting, because B here calls C, and then also H. And then C here calls D and then F. So you can see these both split. And then kind of bizarrely, um, both of these call F and then G. So how does this end up being represented in the call tree? So again, the call tree takes this and sums it all together. So let's look at the first level. We have all A's. And so we zoom down. We can see A has a running time of 3 milliseconds. Um, and B, if we go back up here to our example, I'm going to zoom back out and try to fit both on the screen. So B, again, is all the same, so it collapses down to three milliseconds each. And here's the first time where we branch, because you see, as we walk down the stacks, C is not at the same level, is the same level as H, but they're two different functions that are being um, done. So here we branch, and C has a self time, has a running time rather of two milliseconds, and H has um, a running time of one millisecond. And as we walk down even further, we can see D and F branch again here. And so as we build up the call tree, um, you can see how this starts to branch out as the samples vary over time. Um, and this is kind of like a very simplified case you'd never really see in the real world. Um, but uh, we can actually simulate this by running some JavaScript. So in the next video, I will run, run through these examples with, with real code, and we'll start to look at them in perf.html inside the call tree.